So this is the 528E by Symmetrix, uh, the voice processor. It was uh, introduced uh, back in the early 80s, and it was extremely popular in recording studios uh, used for live PA systems, uh, but mostly for broadcast studios for radio and TV. And I've definitely set my share of these uh, throughout my radio career in broadcast studios. So what I'd like to do in this video, I want to walk you through all of the effects that this has in it. It's got a de-esser, uh, downward expander, compressor or three band parametric EQ. But not only do I want to explain what each of the controls do, but I want to also show you when you are adjusting a control, what you should be listening for to achieve the sound that you may be looking for um, for your voice. Now that could be for broadcasting, podcasting, uh, maybe even voiceover. I will say that these units are kind of like endangered species. They're kind of uh, floating around in some studios, just kind of left over from maybe some of the broadcast days. You could pick them up for a couple hundred bucks uh, used, but uh, like even the one that I have, um, it was in great condition, but just because it's, you know, decades old and the electronics eventually dry out and some of the pots are scratchy and noisy and stuff. So, but they were very popular and it's easy to see why once you uh, get to know the controls and you could see uh, everything that this thing can do. So let's walk through this and I'll show you how to get a good sound from the 528E voice processor from Symmetrix. All right, I should tell you that I have switched microphones and now this is a completely unprocessed sound. Um, previously, when I was speaking to you, I was using a TLM-103 uh, cardioid condenser microphone and now I'm using an SM7B, a dynamic microphone from Shure. Um, and the reason why is because, um, one, I want you to hear the difference and um, two, I imagine because this was so uh, prevalent in the broadcast world, um, you know, usually dynamic mics are used in a broadcast situation. Dynamic microphones are less sensitive uh, and they don't pick up, um, they, they pick up less of the sounds that aren't right up on the microphone. So if you're right next to a co-host or you're using a computer and you're typing or your, your chair is making a squeaking sound, uh, it doesn't get picked up or it gets picked up less by a dynamic microphone. And usually you are speaking just a few inches, if not kissing the, the dynamic microphone in a broadcast situation. That's just the reality. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I've, I've disengaged all of the processing uh, on each, um, each one of the modules here. And we'll start with the um, mic preamp. Now, uh, because I'm using a dynamic microphone, I actually have a cloud lifter in the chain here that I'm using a mic activator. Um, I have the pad, which is a 15 dB pad disengaged and you'd use that if you were um, using this unit with really loud sources if you were using it um, maybe on a for a kick drum or for a, a, a large a guitar cabinet that's cranked uh, to get a distorted sound you would want to reduce um, the input so it doesn't peak and you'd use a pad for that so uh, since we're just using this for speech and um, that's what I imagine most people are going to be watching this referencing we're not going to use the pad um, so that's disengaged. I have um, it's uh, engaged on the top because it's a mic input. Um, we have the phantom power on that switches in the back and uh, I'm using phantom power because that's powering my cloud lifter. So now what I want to do is really reference this uh, meter here on the right side while I have my hand on the input gain to adjust it. So I'll turn it all the way down. And what I want to do is for regular speech, just probably get six to three for excited speech, I'll tell you, like if I were to shout right now, it would clip. So uh, it's okay to be a little bit lower. I'd prefer to be a little bit lower um, because if I laughed, <laughs> I don't want to clip. So that's probably six is pretty good. Hitting three every once in a while is going to protect me if there is some unexpected peaks like laughs or bursts or screams or however you're going to do it. I have the output gain at zero, and I think that's a good starting point. And we will probably adjust the output gain um, after we do some other um, modifications with the compressor and the EQ. Okay, so I think the first thing we're going to do is engage the compressor. Let's move to the compressor, and the compressor ratio we're going to put up just about two, maybe a little under, and then we're going to start dropping the threshold, the compressor threshold. Now, this is the dynamics section, so we're only really dealing with... Um, the dynamic range of the audio. So as I lower the threshold, it's saying, okay, as soon as the audio hits this threshold, which is probably about negative 20, 
so you could see as soon as negative 20 is lit on the meter that's coming in that's when this compressor is going to reach the threshold and you can see the volume the overall volume is coming down so uh, what I would like to try to do is get you know for regular speech uh, three is being hit for excited speech maybe the six gets uh, lit up every once in a while for really excited speech but I think this is a good amount of compression because you could already hear the dynamics the difference between the very loud uh, material in my voice and the very quiet material that that difference has been reduced the dynamic range has shrunk and our output level is a little bit lower because you can hear the volume is lower so I'm gonna raise the output level just a little bit to get back to where we were um, hitting six every once in a while hitting that three so when I take this out it's gonna be louder one two three four five the loudest parts of my voice are louder but then this kind of it puts a cap on them only the loudest sections of my voice negative 15 to 20 db is where the compressor begins to engage and reduce the dynamic range it's a two to one ratio there's a two up on the top there that means for every two db that go into the compressor only one db comes out but here's what you should know if uh, you set it about two and if you dial this in to where you're getting just the three to light up every once in a while i think that's a good amount of compression for a natural voice sound so i think that's a good uh, kind of a bearing to um, address the dynamics with the compressor then what we want to do is move over to the um, downward expander which is the opposite side of um, the dynamic so when i stop speaking i want the gate to close so it's really the inverse of a compressor so I'm gonna set a threshold with the um, expander and I'm saying once my voice before we were talking about the compressor once it hits a high threshold this is a low threshold now once my voice reaches a lower threshold it's actually going to close the output so it makes it much more quiet so I'm gonna raise this threshold until we can find out see as soon as I stop talking the gate closes and you don't get as much noise because it's 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 kind of like opening and closing a gate around my voice and that gives me a nice um, quiet sound so again for the crosstalk for in a broadcast situation if you got a co-host right next to you you don't want their voice to be picked up in your mic and vice versa you don't want your voice to be picked up in their mic and that's why this is really uh, an, a downward expander is really helpful and you can hear it does a great job when I'm not speaking it is silent now let me take it off so you can hear the difference so you hear the background noise, um, you can hear the preamp noise a little bit, and uh, but when I turn it on, as long as I stay close to my dynamic microphone, um, I'm not losing any of the attack or release of my voice. It just sounds pretty natural. So um, it's a great um, a great expander unit that sounds really good for a dynamic microphone in this situation. Now that we have this thing set, um, maybe I'll back off just a little bit. You know, each one of these I kind of end up setting it but they all kind of relate to each other so once i set the eq i may want to go back and adjust the threshold on the compressor and things a little bit because they interact together but let's talk about this really cool um, equalizer one of the, the cool things about this eq is it is a three band parametric eq which means you can cut or boost the amount of high frequencies cut or boost the amount of mid frequencies and you can cut or boost um, the low frequencies uh, you could choose the frequency but what makes it a parametric band eq is the bandwidth when you look at a band of an eq a parametric eq it could be narrow where you can make surgical boosts or cuts uh, depending upon uh, what you need to do or you could make broad strokes they could be a, um, a wide bandwidth and you can make wide changes um, so having a parametric eq allows you to do um, a lot of different tweaking so I cannot tell you that hey these are good settings for the EQ uh, for this unit because it doesn't work that way what's cool is it gives you so much control um, what you can do is use the EQ in a ton of different ways to address a situation that you have with a microphone so um, I'm gonna walk through my situation which is my voice uh, on this microphone in this room I would show you how I would set the EQ because uh, I like to get close to this microphone, it's a dynamic microphone, the SM7B sometimes have a, has a proximity effect and it gives that warm broadcasty kind of a sound. That's If you have an SM7B or a dynamic microphone like this, that's what you're getting it for is that is that warmth. So what you can do is, you know, I'll probably just thin that out a little bit to make it sound a little bit more natural. Here's how I like to set it. I'll engage the EQ. All right, now the EQ is active. 
I'm going to make the bandwidth kind of a medium, maybe a little bit on the narrow side, and I'm gonna I'm gonna crank this up so I can really hear what it what it's doing. So you're really gonna hear that bass sound. And now I could sweep. Here's the really low, low. Here's the really low uh, frequencies, and you can see it gets up to the higher mid or 500 hertz, and you could sweep all the way through the low frequencies. So what I want to do is find that mud. I want to find where that thickest part is. One, two, three in my voice probably right there could turn it up a little bit really find where that mm, that that muddiness is now now that i've identified it i could back off a little bit i could use the cut on this parametric band eq and reduce that muddiness um, that i've found with um uh, this parametric eq so now I, i'm still pretty close to the mic but i don't have that muddiness that proximity effect um, so that's how i would handle the low end with this mic with this eq now what i would try to do and i think um, i love the mid-range on this microphone i want to try to do the opposite i want to find i'm going to raise uh, the frequency here we'll keep it in the middle and i want to find a nice intelligible kind of mid um, place where it thickens up my voice a little bit so i'm i'm going to go for a wider bandwidth in an, a mid or upper mid area and just kind of crank that out just a little bit, one to two dB, one, two, three, four, five. Here, let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just to thicken up my voice here in that mid area. One, two, three. So I've taken out the mud. Now I've brought the uh, the presence in that mid range a little bit uh, more forward. That's how I've decided to use this parametric mid band. Um, like I said, it's different for every mic. It's different for everybody's voice. And then what I feel like I'd like to do with this parametric high band is to uh, bump up the air. I want to get some of that really nice, crisp air. One, two, three, four, five. And, um, and bring out that air in my voice so you could really hear the texture and the highs and the crispiness and the clarity. That's how I like to set... Um, the high band of a parametric EQ for this microphone for my voice in this room. So it's going to be different for everybody. And so there's really no right settings. It's, it's, I, I really would prefer to show you the process on how to kind of attack an EQ and why. And that's how I've chosen to um, use the EQ in this situation for my voice. Now, again, I'm going to go back and definitely um, modify these a little bit. So I first like to set the EQ and then go back to the de because I love to get that high air in here, but you may feel like it's um, the sibilance kind of pokes out at you a little bit too much. I love that clarity. I love those high frequencies, but we can tame them with the de -esser. So I'm going to engage the de here. And um, this is, a, again, very similar to the uh, dynamic section with the compressor and the threshold. This basically is a, another compressor, but it's only going to work on the frequencies that we set. Now, it's a cutoff frequency section. So I bas basically what it's going to do is we're going to choose uh, in the high band frequencies, we're going to choose a specific uh, frequency and anything above that frequency will be reduced once my voice passes the threshold in those frequencies so let's say uh, maybe about five and we'll lower the threshold and we'll start seeing it on the meter uh, during my s sounds you could see just the s's are being reduced on the meter one two three six six seven eight nine one two six seven two six seven two six seven now this is just reducing everything above 8k once it hits the threshold six seven six seven six seven that's a nice little uh, softer Six seven six seven one two three four five six six seven eight nine ten six seven eight nine ten. My approach to setting not only the deesser and the compressor, but the EQ and everything uh, in the situation is my approach is I don't want you really to notice the effects. What I really want you to do is concentrate and be able to um, receive. The message receive the story that I'm telling I want I want the microphone and I want the processor to amplify my message and my emotional connection I don't want you to hear the compressor um, I don't want you to hear the DS or I want it just, just to sound natural and I think we've gotten pretty close to that but that's um, you know when you're dealing with processing voice that's at least my approach that's how I like to go at it and I think we've kind of done this. So I may, I'm, I, I may want to thicken up just the mids a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. There we go. A little thicker. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's hear what it sounds like uh, when I disengage the EQ. One, two, three. Kind of sounds a little thin. Maybe a little bit muddy. 
but I think we've cleared it up and made it a little bit more focused and a little less muddy here. One, two, three with this EQ setting. And you know, we're not doing much, maybe one to two dB of, of gain, one to two dB of gain, maybe three, two to three dB of gain uh, boost or cut here on the low, boosting on the mid and boosting on the high. So we're changing the volume of the frequencies in these bands and we're changing the dynamic range, which is changing the volume of the uh, output here with the D, uh, with the compressor. So that is why we would go back and uh, adjust the output gain to kind of get back what we've lost before. So I'm going to crank this up because we're lowering some of the bass energy. We're compressing some of the louder portions of my voice. So we need to turn this thing back up again. And maybe I can hear that we could probably punch this... Um, punch the threshold of the downward expander a little bit. Okay, so that's how I've come up with my sound for my voice in my room on this SM7B with a cloud lifter using the 528E voice processor. There's one more thing here, and that is the voice symmetry. Now, I'm going to engage it, I'm going to disengage it, I'm going to engage it, and I'll and explain. I need to read this because it's kind of um, innocuous. In the user guide for the 528E, it says... The uh, For broadcast applications, a switchable voice symmetry circuit helps make speech waveforms more symmetrical, which makes better use of the transmitter's output power. So I imagine there's some kind of um, uh, waveform changes that this thing makes that actually makes the voice louder when it's being broadcast over AM or FM and transmitted. That's my guess. I don't know for sure. I'm not hearing much of a difference. I'm hearing a little bit of a difference. Um, it just, to me, sounds like a, a little bit of a, a different kind of a curve on the EQ, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if you know. Um, I hope that helped you, and I, I want to tell you one more thing. The There's so many ways that you can use uh, an EQ, and if you like what I've done here and it kind of made sense to you, um, you know, uh, somebody else's voice or using a different microphone you would use the tools of this parametric band EQ totally differently. It's more about knowing what controls to use and modify to get the sound that you want. You have to know what to listen for, and you have to have a purpose. You have to know what sound you're going after. I have an EQ course uh, that teaches you it precisely that. It's called EQ Fundamentals for Voice, and it is the most popular training course that I sell. Um, and I promise you that if this was a little bit strange or you thought to yourself, God, I wish I knew how to dial that in, you will be an EQ ninja. You'll be a master uh, after you go through the course. Um, everybody that takes it just loves it. It's really kind of game changing if you're into manipulating audio or sculpting audio and you want to make it sound better or the way that you want. Um, you know, knowing EQ, EQ is kind of the basis for everything. So check out the course. I'll put a, a link in the description. So I've been wanting to do uh, the walkthrough for the Symmetrix 528E voice processor for a long time just because uh, it's been so popular and just loved for decades, especially among the broadcast community. What it can do to your voice and just give it that broadcast sound and how much control it has, that's why it was so popular and, and, and I think you can see why. But I will say that uh, with how far we've come with the technology and what you can do with plugins, I think using plugins for your voice gives you more control you have so much more detail and plugins can do everything that this unit can do and more and better and that's probably why these units have been discontinued now Symmetrix still makes units um, they make hardware but all the processing that the units do now is software based i'm lenny b voiceover audio engineer thanks for watching